Hey guys, what is going on? It's Coach Will. I am back. And today's video, I want to talk about should you buy a second location if there's an opportunity there? Okay, so I get this question quite a bit and I figured it might be a really, really good video to do, open up a little discussion on because as gym owners, you know, we run our businesses and then sometimes other opportunities come about, right? Another gym in town that we're, we know, they decide to go out of business and the owner reaches out to us and they're like, hey, do you want to buy my location? And uh, that can get us really excited sometimes because for a lot of us as gym owners, you know, we have these, when we start the business long before we're in it, we have these thoughts in our head about, well, that'd be really cool to have multiple locations, right? Just like, you know, A, from a business standpoint, it's cool to go multiple locations and B, from an ego standpoint, it's like, oh, I've got multiple locations, right? Like I'm the man in town, right? And I've got some experience with this of my own experience with this that I'll share with you guys. But I also have, you know, with, with big little gyms in my company, we work with over 400 gym owners and growing. And we get this question more often than you'd think, because in the last couple of years, the markets have been crazy with, you know, shutdowns and economics and things like that to where gyms have changed hands. A lot of gyms have changed hands. A lot of opportunities have opened up and I've seen, I've seen it be a good opportunity for some gym owners and I've seen it be more often than not, a really not so good opportunity for the gym owner. So I'm going to talk about the situation or when it makes sense to open a second or when it makes sense to buy a second location or even open a second location, right? Because this is something every gym owner has crossed their mind at some point or another. So I'm just going to read the message I got from this gym owner that was asked to me today that kind of prompted this video. And that's, he said, Hey, weird question, but you're, you're one of the smarter people I know. So I'm going to bounce this off of you, which I really, really appreciate, by the way. Thank you. And he said he has an opportunity to buy a second location for $55,000. The coaches are in place. The manager is in place. They have a constant 80 to 85 members a month. And he says he thinks it's a good purchase for him. His driver for this is actually his gym had been his personal gym that he currently has now, which is a CrossFit gym, has been in business for a number of years. And for the last few years, they've been kind of treading water. And then they reached down out and came and worked with us. And they put our, we, we went, put all the systems in place and their gym has since grown like pretty, pretty steadily month over month. Right. And this is not a pitch for what we do. I'm just saying when you put good systems in place, uh, the business starts to grow and then you start to, you start to look at what other things you can do with that system. Right. And so this is his thinking. He's thinking like an investor, right? So he's thinking like an investor, like I can buy this other location that already has the pieces in place. And I can piggyback the system that grew my gym with this other gym and turn this into like an arbitrage opportunity, right? Into a cash flowing business. And that's, that's more or less like his thinking. And he said, his last question was, what do you think is the best loan option for the $55,000 without killing my other gym? So there's another question there, like, should I do this? You know, and the other question is, is this, you know, where can I get the money to do this? Right? So we're going to answer both those questions in this video, because I think it would be really, really valuable for uh, gym owners, because this is something that we all come across. Okay. So number one, you know, does this make sense to do, right? So the first thing I always ask a gym owner when they're considering opening a second location is, do you have the first location completely turnkey, right? Because if you don't have that first location completely turnkey and you start to divide your attention and your mental energy and your like physical labor, like you, you being in a physical place, two different places, when you start to do that, the first location will often start to stall. And that's because the job is not finished there, right? That business is not turnkey. It does not have all the systems fully in place and, and cranking, right? So that's number one question. That's the number one question I always ask. And if the gym owner says, I don't have the first location turnkey, I'll ask them, okay, well, well, to what percentage is this business turnkey? Like, do you have, are you coaching classes? You know, if they're, st if they're still bound to coaching classes, if they have to for this business to, to run, like if they, if they have to show up to product coach class, so the business doesn't stay open, then like, it's an absolute no go. It's like, no, we do not open a second location, obviously. Right. If they, if they have that, I'm like, okay, cool. Green light. Good. Okay. Now what about admin responsibilities? Is there someone, you know, do you have someone that is either an operational person, an operator, an admin or a manager, or someone to oversee the general day-to-day -day operations of this business to where if you were to be gone at this other location, helping set it up and helping prop it up that this location would operate smoothly as if you had never left. If they say no, then it's often a, a red light. It's often a don't do it, right? And I'll share, I'll share with you my experience with this because I had, I, I had the opportunity to cross the same bridge when we had our first location back in uh, 20, well, no, this is our second location. This is our second location in 2015. We had been open for a year. We had moved to Phoenix to open the second location. And while we were there, another 
you know, when we moved in and another gym nearby happened to go out of business. I think what had happened is a lot of their members ended up leaving to come to us anyways, because they weren't really running that good of a business. They thought they were running a good business, but they were obviously very exposed because as soon as a, a better provider in the area moved out and made themselves known, we, we basically ate up all the market share. So after a while, they were like, hey, do you just want to buy us out? And uh, the location was awesome. And uh, they had, you know, enough members to where like, I knew if I could basically put my special sauce in place there that we could build on top of that and build another revenue stream. And so it was really, really hard. It's like one of those things it's like where when you have a, a hammer, everything looks like a nail to where I was like, oh, I could easily blow that thing up. Because, you know, I had started many successful businesses before. And when you have good business systems, you know, and you under, you have the skill set, like you can bring value to any business, right? So I got on the phone at the time, much like this gym owner asking me, I got on the phone at the time. I didn't have a mentor because there weren't mentors in the, in the gym world that I trusted at the time. But I got on, on with someone who I considered a mentor that had some understanding of what we were doing. And I asked him like, you know, what are your, what were your thoughts? What are your thoughts? I explained him the whole situation and I painted this big picture of like how we can make all this extra money, this extra location and how it all just made sense financially. And it did. But he asked me the, he asked me the same question as I asked this person asking me of like, you know, in this business you're currently in, you know, you've been in business for a year. Is this thing completely turnkey? And uh, he got to ask me the questions about like, okay, is fulfillment turnkey? Like, do I have staff and coaches to run everything? Yes, I, I didn't, but you know, we were close. And then he asked me like, what about management? I said, no. And I said, and he's like, okay, well, if not management, what about sales? Like if you don't, someone doesn't show up to greet those people that walk in the door that knows how to sell the memberships and convert those people, then you're just going to get a revolving door going. You know, do you have that? And I was like, no. So we didn't end up doing it, right? And I'm so glad I didn't because we ended up growing that first location to like 350 members over the course of the next five years. And it was, it was because we just stayed focused on that one location and got it to where it was really, really successful. And th at that point, we, we decided we did have a turnkey and we could decide to do other things. That's actually when I decided to go start this company, Big Little Gyms. Once my gym was in a completely turnkey situation, and I also had enough demand of people wanting my help doing this that I was like, okay, let's go do this. But we could have done anything, right? And, it, and I would say it's the same for a gym owner that is considering, you know, a second location is once that first location is, you know, cooking with fire and turnkey, that's when it makes sense to go ahead and do the second location. Now, this gym owner, when I asked him if the current location is completely turnkey, he said, it's not. But he did say this new location that has the opportunity to buy is turnkey. It has the current owners live in another state. And they had, has management and staff and, uh, you know, it, and, and because that owner lives out of state and the, the current location only has 80 to 85 members, it's breaking even. So that's why they're looking to sell it, but it has all the systems in place. The only thing they don't have that this gym owner sees the opportunity is they don't have the system, the big little gym system. They don't have it yet. So they know that by, he knows by buying this and plugging the big little gym system in with all the marketing stuff, getting the marketing funnel dialed in. So lead generation is stable. So he can start driving traffic into this. It's like all the fulfillment and operational pieces are there, but the sales and marketing machine is not. And he has, because he's experienced it with his gym, with working with us at Big Little Gyms, he, is, has, he has that missing piece that he knows he can plug in. And he also has done his research on the location, and uh, which I've also verified with him is a fantastic location that generally we're pretty familiar with that we know has a good market for these types of gyms, that there's a great opportunity here with this, right? And the last question he had was like, you know, on the funding side of things, how, what kind of loan options should I look, should I look at? Being a small business owner, he's not, you know, super savvy on how to acquire funding. So I, I, I share with him a couple of common, common options that you're going to, you're going to see in the business world. One of them, you know, obviously is friends and family, you know, ask friends and family, see, see who can loan you money to go make this acquisition. But the one I actually told him to ask about, inquire about with the current owner first is owner financing. You know, I said, you know, if the biz, if it's $55,000 he wants up front as a cash deal, see if for a premium, if he'll finance it for you over a year, right? So instead of 55,000, maybe it's 5,500 a month for 12 months, which actually gets that person an additional, let's see if I get my calculator out here and I could tell you guys exactly what that is, you know, roughly $15,000, right? Or it's actually pretty much extra, two extra payments, about $11,000. So you'd be paying, you know, essentially 18 or 19% in interest on it but it's owner financing and it's a great deal for $55,000 for him to buy a turnkey CrossFit gym with the, with the equipment included. I think it would be worth it if in an owner financing situation to pay a little bit of a premium to acquire this business. And uh, you wouldn't have to worry about it going on your credit um, or anything like that, right? Now, if that's not possible, the owner, my guess is the owner 
He said the owner reached out to him today with a price drop of about 30K to this price. So that means the owner probably wants to move pretty quickly, probably doesn't want to finance it, probably wants to get it uh, unloaded quickly. I would still ask what the owner financing is. Maybe it's not a cash thing. Maybe it's, they just want to get out from underneath the paying the rent. So that would be the first place I would start. Second, I told him to, you know, inquire with his bank about a business line of credit. You know, interest rates aren't as great as they were even just a year or two ago. But, you know, considering again, that the opportunity with this is pretty high, if you could pay it off over the next year, you pay pretty limited interest. That'd be a great opportunity. If not a business loan, then a personal line of credit, you know, and a really, a really creative way of financing also would be if you own your home, you could get a home equity line of credit. A lot of people that own homes have a lot of equity right now because they bought their homes prior to things booming. And if you're sitting on a couple hundred thousand dollars of equity, you could go to a bank and you could get a home equity line of credit against the equity in your property, which is usually about one or 2% over prime, right? So if interest rates right now are six or 7%, you're going to pay about a seven or 8% interest rate on that, uh, which again is pretty low. And you can use that cash to go acquire the business as the business makes money, pay that money back against the home equity loan to pay yourself off. And then last would be like the last situation I share with them is you could go for hired money where you find a private lender that essentially is collateralizing something of yours. It could be your car, your home, your golf clubs something of value that they, that they can take from you if you don't pay them back. And then usually hard money, which is usually the last route to go, is very high interest. You're usually like 10% over prime. So if interest rates are 16% or 6%, you're probably gonna pay 16%. And that's usually interest only compounded monthly. So that means you're gonna pay, you know, on $55,000, you're gonna pay 16% interest rate. And that payment is due every month. And usually it's only for six or six months at a time. You see this most kind of lending most commonly in real estate, but those kind of lenders will also collateralize almost anything else as long as they know that they can get their money back out of whatever they're collateralizing, right? So they don't care. They'll give you the money as long as they have something to collateralize. Usually with real, real estate, it's collateralizing the very property that you are buying, but they'll collateralize your existing property if you want, if you need the money. And then as long as you pay them back, they won't take your stuff. That's, all, that's as close as it gets to being a loan shark. So I don't think you should go that route, but that's another option. So that's today's videos, guys. That's, that's my thoughts on it. Don't buy a second location unless the first one is turnkey or unless that second business is turnkey. Now, as you venture into that second business, you know, you don't really want to do your due diligence to really make sure it actually is turnkey, that those people are going to stay on board. You want to have conversations with that team to say, hey, what do we got to do to make sure you stay on board? Because obviously, if you buy that second location and then the manager leaves, now you as the owner now have to go manage two locations. And I will tell you where it's gone wrong for most of these gyms is when they have two locations that they are managing fully, they are the operator of both locations. Usually those gym owners don't make any more money than a single location gym owner makes. If they do, they're doing, if they're making any more money, they're doing it all at, a, at an outsized ratio of work to income, you know? And so we've actually seen more gym owners go the other way over the years where they own two locations and they decide to consolidate into one. And they actually end up making more money than they did with the two locations, doing less work, being less stressed out. And being able to build an actual business where they're not uh, overwhelmed by the day-to-day. -day. Because here's the thing is uh, every minute you are stuck working in the business is minutes you cannot spend building the business. So if you overwhelm yourself with a to-do list that's two locations wide, it's going to be really, really hard to spend the time to even find someone to hire outside of getting those things done. So you kind of trap yourself. So that's today's video. Hopefully this is helpful for you guys. Hopefully if you found this helpful and useful and a value, please click the like button comment that you liked it, share. If you're watching this on a platform like YouTube or anywhere else like that, where you can subscribe, please subscribe. I would love it if you guys subscribe. So that way it gives me motivation to post more stuff like this for gym owners. It is valuable and very, very practical. And if you need help with growing your gym, getting some reliable, predictable, and scalable systems in place to grow your micro gym, go to biglittlegyms.com. When you get there, you can fill out the get started form book a time to meet with me. We'll discuss your current situation and your goals, show you everything involved with our program and system and get you going strong into the future. Have a great day, guys. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.